Um, Bill, thank you very much. Um, first of all, I'm, I have to say I'm very delighted to be here um, this afternoon. I've always had a long association with WACA in one way or another. I've known a number of leaders in the WACA central office over the years, and I've spoken to a number of WACA councils uh, over the last 20 years. Uh, so it brings back a lot of fond memories, and I was very delighted to become a member of the board. Uh, first of all, I'd like to also thank everyone in the room here for coming to the national conference. It's very important to support this conference, and your presence here indicates not only a personal and individual uh, support of the conference, but also of your individual councils back home. So I appreciate that. Um, the uh, one thing I would like to say is that we're all very familiar with what the council obviously does in terms of its mission. Our mission obviously is to spread the word on foreign policy, foreign affairs throughout the country, but in particular an emphasis on the youth of our nation as seen by the academic world quest that Bill administers. Um, we've done a very wonderful job I think in terms of that over the years and I think it's something that all of us can be very proud of. But as you can see in this electoral process now that's going ongoing, uh, the need to spread the word on foreign affairs and the impact that foreign affairs has on Americans is extremely important and is growing. We have a big dearth of understanding of what, how the policies of foreign affairs impact domestic policies and vice versa. So I think our role, while it's been very good and our mission's been very good, I think our mission has to be strengthened and has to be grown over the years to, in order to keep spreading the word additionally. No, I'm okay, I, I always speak with a dry mouth. <laughs> uh, and I say this, I, th I think, you know, uh, in terms of the central office or the main office here in, in Washington and the individual councils, I think the relationship has been very, very good, but I think we can strengthen that relationship in such a fashion that would strengthen each of the individual councils. My goal over the next few years is to make sure that we can grow the individual councils, both in terms not only as member in membership, but also in terms of the impacts that you have in your individual communities. And to achieve that, you need a number of goals to set for yourself. You have to do the branding a little bit better in terms of not only on the local level, but also on the national level. You also have to strengthen and grow prog programming. Now, the question, of course, is how do you do these things without uh, any finances? And so basically, I'd like to bring two things to your attention, one of which, unfortunately, has already bypassed us, and another one which is I'm going to offer to the full board at our board meeting on Friday. The first thing that I refer to is as I took over in July, I realized that over the years you had been having a long discussion with the World Affairs Journal to take over the journal. I'm sure you're all familiar with that, I'm assuming, to a certain extent. Uh, well, the World Affairs Journal was a periodic, uh, periodical on foreign affairs. Uh, published here in Washington. Uh, we were close to achieving a, an agreement, uh, Bill and I, uh, in August, and we had the support of the um, executive committee to proceed. Unfortunately, in terms of pricing and other issues, we weren't able to achieve that goal. However, the online uh, version of that is still very much available. That's something that I'm very much interested in having our board examine and pursuing in the near future. A vehicle like that would give us great outreach into the community uh, nationwide. And I think that's a vehicle that would not only help strengthen uh, the individual councils, but also give uh, added recognition to them as well as to the uh, main office here in Washington. So that's something you should keep in the back of your minds that we will be pursuing. The other thing is, it's very, very easy and very good to talk about strengthening programming and branding, but of course you need money for something like this. And I know each of the individual councils, some are strong financially, some may not be so strong financially. And I think one of the goals that I'd like to set for myself, and I'll be bringing a proposal to the full board on Friday, is to start a national fundraising campaign on behalf of the World Affairs Councils of, of America. And the goals of this will be not only to raise the money, but also specifically to help brand the councils, to help brand uh, what we do, also to be able to raise enough funds to broaden the program we, we have now, as well as to uh, maybe institute new programming that we could undertake. Um, the purpose would also be to have money flow back into the individual councils. 
In other words, uh, we would be raising money not only to sustain and support the national programs such as the National Conference, the Cover to Cover series, but also what I'd like to do is raise funds that would flow back into the councils to help each of the individual councils be strengthened. Well, I hope you're on the board. <laughs> okay, so I'm starting with one vote. <laughs> uh, and uh, you know what Bill and I have discussed is starting a quiet campaign. First of all, I fully understand that we haven't had, we meaning WACA has never had a real fundraising campaign. So this is gonna be something new to all of us. And there'll be bumps in the road in terms of how we undertake and how, what success we have in this. But we'll start what is called a quiet campaign in the fundraising business, kind of fly, fly under the radar. So reach out to a number of people and organizations, see if we can get support and see if we could raise some money. And I think we, we can be successful through a sustained effort. I think through this kind of uh, campaign, we will not only strengthen the individual councils, but we'll also make Bill's office a little bit better suited to serve those individual councils with enhanced programming. And I think that's something we should all take a look at in terms of the long-term future. Um, like I said, you know, uh, I'm delighted to be uh, on the board to serve as your chair. I've been here for about four months now. I've learned a lot. I think the conference is another threshold in terms of my learning curve. And then, of course, the board meeting on Friday will be, I hopefully, the last and final step in my learning process, and I'll be able to be an added asset to uh, all of your councils. I like to keep an open door policy and do something administrative. I'm very open to any suggestions. If you want to call me, feel free to call me, email me. I know a number of individual councils have already reached out to me to come down and visit with them and to give presentations. I'm one readily accepted as long as it can fit my schedule. And I'll be happy to entertain any suggestions or any offers for coming to visit with your individual councils. So feel free to reach out to me. Um, I know it's, all of you have day jobs, all of you work hard, I do it as well, but I try to make time for the commitments that I make on a, on a voluntary basis, and just because it's voluntary doesn't mean it's, it's not that important to me. This is very, very important. So I look forward to working with all of you. I've met many of you in the past and worked with some of you on a, a number of issues during the past few months, so I look forward to uh, establishing good relationship with all of you here and working with you. And I'd be happy to answer any questions at this stage if that's okay. If that's okay. Thank you. Okay. Do we have mics floating around the room, by the way? Is that a question or you? No. Thank you, Mr. Ambassador. Um, to what extent, uh, and this is only my second meeting, so maybe everyone else knows the answer, but let Well, me, I may not know the but, answer anyway, but that's. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. But to what extent can WACA um, actually provide these top speakers uh, to the local WACs throughout the United States and facilitate uh, them? Yeah, no, I think that's a very fair question. First of all, let me say, don't call me ambassador, call me Roman, okay? That, that makes it a lot easier for, every, for everyone. Um, I, I think that's a very good question. I think the caliber of speakers that you've been receiving uh, nationally have been pretty good at times. Uh, can we do better? Absolutely. And that's one of the things that I put on my agenda in terms of discussing with Bill. Uh, I know his hands have been full and my hands have been full with helping to organize this first conference. But once this is behind us, we're gonna look at this a little bit more steadily. Um, you know, I come from the diplomatic world. I served over about 20 years in the State Department. Uh, I know a lot of people. It doesn't mean they necessarily be free in terms of scheduling. But we definitely would be more than open to suggestions from each of the individual councils. If you have someone on your radar that you would like to address, the chances are that either I or Bill know that, know that individual, or we know someone that knows them so we can reach out to, uh, to get them. I mean, a good example is for the National Conference now. I know you've tried to get Bob Zellick, I think, in the past, and Bob wasn't available, but Bob's a good friend of mine. I just called him and he agreed to do it, so we're happy to get Bob. And that's the kind of stuff I'd like to offer, you know, the individual councils. So feel free, you know, to contact me or Bill if you have someone on your radar. And I think what we'll try to do is, uh, I don't know, I don't, you know, forgive me because I'm still learning the process here. But in the old days, and I'm really dating myself here, in the old days there used to be 
this is in the old print days, so before digit. Uh, in the old days, there used to be like a pamphlet that used to go around with all the speakers. An annual booklet. Yeah. I don't know if, you, if that's still done or not, because I haven't seen anything like that, where, where uh, the Waka would uh, take a, um, a listing of all speakers that have expressed an interest to give speeches. It was, they were kept on a yearly basis. They were updated. They gave the name of the individual, their, what their backgrounds were, and the topics that they would cover. And that was sent out to individual councils. And you kind of went through and, and cherry-picked whom you wanted. I don't know if that's being done now or not, or that's kind of formed by the way. I, can, I can address that. Yeah. Um, so we moved that before my tenure uh, to an online format in, uh, okay. on our website. Mm -hmm. And we found that it's, it's not widely trafficked. Okay. It may be hard to find. It may not be updated. These are problems that we need to address. I will say that there are uh, a couple of uh, there are a couple of media for us to deliver speaker information to you. One is every Monday we publish our e-newsletter, which at the bottom contains council highlights, and we we would appreciate you're um, introducing, you're, you're contacting us. I'm going to invite Leon Eshaki, our new communications officer, to come in momentarily. But if you push your events on us, we can share. And if you're taking the time to look at the, that e-newsletter weekly, you will see what is happening around the network. It kind of disappears, but we, we typically show something like 20 or 25 speakers that are around the country at your councils. What we don't do is a Yelp kind of evaluation of whether they're good or not. And that's, that's something that we, we want to look at an online engagement through our website that will help you. We also do the cover to cover and ho occasional hot topics conference calls. That's really, you know, 12 to 18 a year, but that gives you an audible. You can evaluate how engaging some of these authors and speakers are and decide whether it's a fit for you. Um, I've, well, this conference probably has more packed panels. Uh, we did a different approach. We'll see if that works out. I sometimes like duets and trios, but we've got a lot of quartets going. So you're going to have, and with the think tank offsites, you're going to have uh, something like 50, 50 bios in here, and they're all uh, willing to come to you. And finally, um, you know, there's, there's just the, the customer effort and the grant effort where if we're successful in attracting foundations, private companies, government agencies like the EU, uh, Shell Rational Middle, and so on, these are, these are opportunities that you bid on, they come with money. There's also my own personal effort to pass through information as I have a, a, a finger on the pulse of what you're doing locally. Um, Ann Richard, who I mentioned is speaking tonight, you know, she's, she's going to do six or seven uh, events from last October through early February, and the migration refugee issue is not going to go away. She is very fond of the exposure that we give her, but we need to share better. And I need your help so that we can move these names around. Okay. Sure. Hi, Roman. Thank you. My name is Patrick Terry, and I'm in Columbus, Ohio. Um, I'm also on the board. I look forward to voting for whatever you put forward. <laughs> <laughs> that part about money coming to the other council. I, I love this organization. <laughs> I had a question about, I feel like um, one of our most underutilized assets is our national uh, platform. Mm. Part of it is branding, um, and part of it is just people just don't know us. They know the Council on Foreign Relations, they know the Asia Society, they know Global Ties, they, they might know others. What is your kind of orientation towards strategic partnerships at a national level that we might align with, or do you prefer to niche ourselves out on our own for the biggest strength? Thanks. Uh, that's a very good question. I think it goes to the heart of what I was talking about in terms of the fundraising campaign. I think one of the problems we suffer from, is you're right, is in terms of national brand recognition. Um, and I, th I, over the next three or four years, I'd like to tackle that head on. I think it's very important to establish an identity uh, for quality programming and quality services 
And as a result of that, I think each of the individual councils will benefit from that. And one of the reasons that the Bill and I pursued the World Affairs Journal was for that precise reason. It would give us an identity almost overnight in terms of a publication. It would give us a little bit more credibility as a very viable uh, organization, an organization that's deeply involved in policy issues that are being brought to the American public. Unfortunately, that didn't go through, but at the same time, as I just to uh, repeat again, we are looking at the online publication. As I gather, you know, right now everything is so digital that maybe the online thing is going to work out better if we can uh, if we can nail that. Because I think Bill, you mentioned they get what 300,000, 400,000 hits or something on that. We monitor uh, uh, Twitter, Facebook, and other uh, metrics. In terms of Facebook, I think they were adding something like. 3,000 to 5,000 a week, mm. and that exceeds our historic total. Okay. So okay. They're, they're up in the 400,000 range, maybe even 500,000 now. At some point, when you get to a million, you command a monetary power because people want a, a sophisticated audience like ours and the sponsors that we have actually on our cell phones now through Bizabo. This, this, the idea was not just about branding reach, it was also a vehicle for sponsorship in the magazine, on the website, and that, that really would give us a, a capacity build. Mm -hmm. And going along um, uh, the line that you just uh, asked about, uh, other thoughts that we have in mind are doing some kind of national poll that will be tied to the national conference, which will give us a little bit more name recognition. Uh, the other things that I've been thinking about is in terms of maybe being able to get grant programs where we can get individual scholars associated with us for reports, et cetera. In other words, there's a host of things that we can do out there, and we've been thinking about these, and Bill and I are going to be able to sit down after the conference and maybe put a coherent plan together that we can bring forward to the rest, to the full membership. But you're absolutely right, and we have to better brand ourselves and strengthen our program, not a, not only on the local level, but on the national level, to provide the type of services that people in the foreign affairs industry, for lack of a better term, understand and look forward to. And I think we can do that, quite frankly. We have all the basic building blocks. We just have to put it together. And the, and the thing that will tie it all together is a good fundraising campaign that will make us very viable in all those areas I just mentioned. More questions? There's one there, and I have one. But Go ahead. All right. Okay. Well, I just want to um, just tell you how joyful I feel at hearing your vision and that understanding the strength of the network lies in strengthening the councils mm -hmm. and that that's the vision for making the central office, mm -hmm. the Washington office mm -hmm. strong. But I, I also want to throw out that I think she some, there's, you know, we are probably the best source of information about how America feels, informed America feels about foreign policy and international relations. And I just wonder why couldn't we, we may not need to get the presidential candidates speaking to us at debating, but why couldn't we at some point get engaged in this, have listening sessions where they're here from us, what we think our issues, you know, the issues are. We're perfect for that and that would shoot our name recognition up almost immediately. We need, I think we have enough power and clout to ask for annual meetings with the Secretary of State for some of our people, or with the President. I mean, I just think we're not, there's so much more I think that we can do if we just ask. As the, the, the person said earlier, it's a no if you don't ask, right? Uh, Joyce, Joyce, you're absolutely right, and believe me, Bill and I are going to be doing a lot of asking. <laughs> he doesn't know it yet. <laughs> But uh, you know, you're absolutely right. You know, uh, I mean, we, we're really putting putting uh, you know our hopes up here at this stage. But there's no reason why in the future, you know, WACA can't be sponsor a presidential debate or some kind of regional debate. And there are all kinds of possibilities. Presidential libraries do that now. Uh, other institutes do that. And WACA, you know, we are a national-based organization that focuses on on uh, the American public. And I think that we, you know, if we could build ourselves and build up our credibility a little bit more, we'd be able to get to that stage. We have all the building blocks. I've looked at the organization very carefully. We have all the building blocks. We just haven't been able to tie it together. And I think we can do that. There was a question back here. Yeah. 
Yeah, um, I just had a question. Uh, you were speaking about branding. I was wondering if there's any idea of uh, investing in some branding assistance, professional branding assistance, and if that makes sense. Uh, all of that makes sense, uh, but you know, the problem with that is you need money, and f whether it's for branding or whether it's for a fundraising campaign, you need a lot of money. But I think we have all the basic building blocks, as I mentioned before. You have a, a good staff, small. You have good councils, um, some more much stronger than others. And I think if we work together, we can probably achieve everything we need to achieve with the groupings that we have right now. Maybe not as quickly as if we paid someone, but at this stage of the game, given, uh, given our resources uh, and the f lack of experience in undertaking this, I'd rather start in-house, so to speak, and see how far we can get. I've had some experience from fundraising in my previous positions. I know Bill's had some, some experience. Uh, I have a communications background in terms of branding. Bill obviously comes from the world of journalism, has a concept of branding. So we, I would like to pool our resources together and see what we can achieve at this stage. Uh, you know, cost, if you cost less, it's better, is my, is my motto. Any other questions or comments? Yes. I need to have a comment. Uh, I, like Joyce, I'm very pleased with what I'm hearing. I have been very pleased with the service of the central office, the Washington staff. I uh, make a phone call and I get a person. I don't get an answering machine. Mm -hmm. um, the staff is very supportive. They're very creative. Clearly, they're passionate about their work and what they do. And I would hate to have more responsibility put on them that spreads them even thinner than they are. Um, so I just, I, I don't want that quality of their work to deteriorate with an expanded um, vision. Yeah, so. I'll, I'll take your comment and turn it into a question. Would, uh, I understand exactly what you're saying. You know, Bill and I have discussed this a little bit and we'll discuss it a little bit more. By no means would any bit of the quality of service that is being put forth now be um, undermined. Uh, I'm very keenly aware of the limits, I should say, I shouldn't say the limits, uh, limits. burdens that uh, poor Bill has on his shoulders. You know, it's the old TV ad or radio ad where the phone rings, the guy says, hello, HR, hello, you know, packing, packaging, hello, mailroom, it's the same guy. So, you know, it's kind of, that's kind of what Bill is it right now. And that's why when I made my comments about fundraising, I said it would be a quiet campaign. Uh, you don't want to go broadcast it because if you don't achieve, if you don't achieve X amount in 30 days, or some people say it's a failure, even though it's not a failure. So we just do it slowly. We have we have time to get to where we want to get, and so um, no, we don't want to undermine the central office's ability to provide services. But at the same time, any success we achieve will help maybe augment the staff, which will then give more services to the region, to the uh, local councils. So all this is a, a kind of a master plan that we're, we're talking about because if you're going to grow the organization, you're going to have to have more staff on in the central office to provide the services to the local councils. One of the um, purposes of the WorldQuest Endowment Fund is to create a return on that endowment that will annually provide uh, for the fixed costs of doing the national event, which have run about 20,000 or so a year pretty consistently. The individual fundraising that I've done and my predecessors have done um, has its ebbs and flows, and some funders leave at certain times um, when you've had the kind of leadership transitions that this organization has experienced. It's like a, a cascading, uh, there they go, leader goes, funder goes, and now we're, we're, we're building back up. Um, I think that, you know, with a million dollar campaign, which will be part, which will be a core, you know, we're sort of folding this in, the idea is to fold it into a broader campaign, but we will complete the campaign in April uh, with the goal that that million dollars or more, if we're so fortunate, will throw off eventually uh, something like $50,000 a year. That allows us to do what we haven't been able to do, which is to add um, at least a part-time dedicated 
uh, staffer for education. Ideally, we would begin to look like some of the stronger councils where we'd have people who are dedicated to one or two or three roles instead of multiple, like he described with the commercial. Uh, so, so, you know, right now, uh, communications, Althea uh, in operations, and myself as president, we're all doing envelope licking when it comes time to getting that event done in April. And we enjoy it because it's worth it. And the kids are, um, you know, this is on mission and it's something that's very fundable. And so this campaign is a broader experience of that. We need to build capacity to serve you better. And we do need to be in all 50 states because that will also support asks that we do to foundations. So it won't happen overnight, but it's a very important goal to have. Yeah, I think the key thing to remember here is that we're starting something that we've never undertaken in the past, and it's gonna take time. So no one would wanna put a time frame in terms of how soon we would be able to achieve X, Y, or Z. But the important thing is that we start something, and that's important, and we start something all together. And so I'm really looking forward to getting this campaign going with Bill. Any other questions or comments? If not, what I'd like to do now, given that it's Veterans Day, is to thank everyone here that served our country in uniform. Appreciate all your service to our country, and God bless you. So since we've used this time uh, this afternoon with, uh, with missing one presentation, um, we can break up into groups so that you can network amongst yourselves. The uh, plan is that there will be a general reception at 5.30 um, that will allow you to get some refreshments and to come back into this room for dinner at 6.30. The 1918 Society, which consists of a lot of board members and supporters who are uh, helping us out with extra funding. Uh, that reception is gonna be across the street at the Cosmos Club, 2121 Massachusetts Avenue, not far at all. That reception will be from five to six. Um, if there's anything that I or my dedicated staff can do for you, uh, please let me know. Um, I'm gonna introduce them at dinner because they're just still working hard to solve problems, which is what we do every day. Thank you very much. <laughs>